Hey, this is Ray with GameServerSetup.com. Today we're going over Counter-Strike Global Offensive Server Setup for Windows. This will be the Windows version. I'll make another video for Linux after this. Um, Counter-Strike has been one of those games I always love just to pick up and go. It's always fun to play with office mates or friends. So having to be able to set up a server on the fly is a pretty cool deal. And Steam makes it pretty dang easy to do. Um, today we're going to be going over how to do it with the dedicated server style. So I actually have my... Uh, server 2012 ready to go that will that's blank brand new installation that we'll be setting it up on got 155 hours of this game so do play it quite a bit so as we are here's my server blank as I said um, for the text version I mean it's all written out what I'm gonna be doing here so just go ahead and follow along with that and you should be able to get this set up pretty dang quickly so first off um, you're going to go ahead and need, oh, I'm going to have to fix the foot, yeah. You're going to go ahead and uh, need to download Steam CMD. If you're a brand new server, you're first, you're going to have to turn off, i.e. enhanced security. Um, if you want to use the internet at all, so that's always good to do. <laughs> oh, cancel, sorry, didn't mean to freak you out. All right, so that should be fixed. It's probably still gonna give me security issues because I still have trust issues. But we'll go ahead and just download this. So you can do a Steam CMD or the link is on the guide. I'm just gonna to go to Google real quick, um, show you exactly where it is. Downloading, click Windows, and then you just go to the download zip folder. And we're gonna save that. And then we're gonna open folder. So now we got that in our downloads. So let's stop here, open a new file explorer. We're going to go ahead and go to computer, open our front of our C. We're going to create two folders here. We're going to create Steam CMD. You don't have to do it this way, but that's the way I like to do it. And then we're going to create CSGO server. Basically just to keep our stuff organized a little bit. And you can take it further if you want. You don't even have to put in the root either. This is just how I do it. So in there, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop or copy and paste. Steam Steam D zip file. I'm going to go and extract it. I'll do that deal. I'm going to go ahead and just actually move this to the front of it. I don't need all these folders. So there, we're good. There. So we've got that Steam CMD for So now all you do is double click it. It's going to start downloading a bunch of stuff. Oh God, just run. Server 2012, always checking on security. All right. So there, boom. We got CMD all downloaded. As you can tell, we got all these files downloaded. This is all dependent on your internet connection. This is a gigabit server, has a gigabit connection to the internet, so it's really quick on everything. <sighs> Sorry about that. All right, so then once we got all that done, you'll go to the code, and we're gonna actually go in and log in anonymous, because you don't actually need to own CSGO in order to play it. Or actually, sorry, not play it, but to start a server on it. So you can log in anonymous. And it'll just be a default profile that Steam allows for certain games. Some games require you to actually own the game in your account, and it'll check that. But this most of, I think all of Val games actually don't uh, require you to own the start a server. So, and then our next piece of code is force install directory. And this is that directory set up in just a little bit before. It's under that C. And then it was a CSGO server. That's our directory where we want all our server files to be downloaded to. So that's what we're telling Steam right there. And then we're just going to do the app update. And the app update is how you uh, force a download. Each app has its own unique ID. CSGO is 740. And then we're going to validate that install the first time. Um, you also use this app update right here to uh, do updates to the server in case a new update comes out and you need to update your server, just run the app update 740. It just actually run this whole piece of code because you need to set the install directory and blah, blah, blah. So just go ahead and click that or hit enter, not click, and it's gonna start the progress. And so from here, it should take whatever long it takes depending on your internet connection. I think for me, depending on how nice Steam is, it should be about a minute, maybe two. Yeah, it's going pretty quick now, so. I'm going to go ahead and pause this, and then I will get right back to you guys. Alright, and now we're all done downloading. You can go ahead and close that black screen. Sorry, I did it before I started the recording again. Um, and then you can just browse to your C uh, 
CSGO server folder that you, we created earlier, and you should see the SRCDS and all these other fun files there. Um, basically, this is how you start your server. This little file, this little executable is your server. Um, the way I like to do it, though, is I like to create a batch file and just kind of make myself a little bit easier. Uh, so go ahead and right click, create a new text document. We're going to call this server start. Yeah, I'm going to go open that up. And inside here, um, you can grab the code off the website. Oop, wrong button, sorry. I'm going to grab that code. We'll just go ahead and enter the default code. Now, there's tons of different uh, ways to configure your server, different maps, different names, different console, passwords, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's a configuration tab on my website with all the different configurations that are pretty much normally used, but there's a lot of stuff you can do above and beyond that. Um, Google's your friend with anything that Valve creates because they just have a crazy ability to uh, make everything a little intense I should say so go ahead and right click or I'm sorry file and then save as and we're going to save this as a batch file so instead of that text file that it's defaulted to just hit all files and then we're going to put a dot bat and that stands for batch all right and then just go ahead and save it and then close that and we should see our server start right here which is a windows batch file now all you have to do to start your server is just double click it boom and this is your actual server running. This is what tells you what's going on. You'll see the IP address. You'll see that if it's back secure mode is activated, um, it'll tell you if it's actually communicating, which it is. And so and it tells you all these other fun stuff. So these are like all the settings you could set. All this craziness here is where you could you can change. And it gets pretty complicated. Now there's also some tools out there that some of the community members created to help manage it. Just Google CSGO server um, management tools and you'll see a ton of stuff um, I prefer to do everything by myself through command line just because I'm that's how I always done stuff um, and like I said you can change this as however you want just close your server close your batch file and then uh, go ahead and change it to however you want your server to be and start it up um, the last thing you'll want to do is port forwarding if you're on a home network if you're on a home network you're going to tell your router hey 27015 needs to go to my server. Um, this is basically what port forwarding is. It's translating from that public IP to your private IP on your home network. If you're on a dedicated server network like I am, you have your public IP. You don't need to worry about that. Just make sure your firewall allows it through. And that's all there is to it, folks. If you have any questions, leave a comment on my website or on this uh, YouTube video. And I'll try to answer as fast as possible or want someone from the community, I'm sure, will chime in and help you out. Best of luck and hope happy gaming. Bye.